This file could harm your device. Do you want to keep it anyway? The answer to that always is no. Downloading malware from a seemingly non-suspicious link, but it turns out to be suspicious, and then it connects you to a C2 server. What? Yes, it can happen. Today, we are going over the attack path for that kind of situation. So, you go to Google Authenticator, you search Google Authenticator, you click on some wrong link, spoofed link, whatever. Oh no, this file could harm your device. Do you want to keep it anyway? The answer to that always is no. But some people decide to keep it anyway, and then they get connected to a C2 server. So, don't click if it says something like that. For the love of God. And always read your URLs. Make sure it's the same. Anyway, I'm going on a rant. Back to the main point. So, this post. A malicious ad led to a fake Teams page delivering malware using an HTTP C2 server at 5.252.153.241. Domains and IP addresses for this activity frequently change. And today's example is a snapshot from that date. So, as you can see from these images, the malicious ad. As you can see, Microsoft Teams app official site get start. You see that URL, not even the same. Also, Burlington app appliance. What? Anyway, some silly person clicks that. Then, oh no, download Teams for Windows. The application.setup thing downloads. 5.52.153.241 80 API file get file 264872 that's a malicious PowerShell script to run yay then you download the file then all this malicious traffic starts running ah oh no client hellos say oh no I'm connected to a C2 now and then the files persist on the infected host whoa -oh. so that was kind of the attack path of a Teams application downloading a C2. But today, we're gonna analyze Google Authenticator C2, because why not? Now, switching to Wireshark. We are in Wireshark. These are the packets captured from that transaction. As you can see, the victim desktop L8C5GSJ and if you know anything about packet captures, you can already see suspicious stuff going on. But we'll get to that in a second. So, if you were investigating this from the beginning, and you did not know what was going on, and some dude was like, um, my computer's acting weird, download this file, something's going on, what would you search for first? Well, let me tell you. You would search for DNS. So, We filter for DNS. This is all the DNS traffic. As you can see, um, up here, it's a protocol, it's cut off, but all this DNS, 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 DNS. My mouse, but hopefully you see DNS. So we're looking for something suspicious and we know they got infected by Google Authenticator. They said they downloaded this, something went wrong. So we have that clue. So we control F. A search bar pops up here, very tiny. Change that to string, search, like authenticator, something like that. So auth, search, you see right there, Google Authenticator, whatever, the fake website. Click here, find, you can find all of them. So it seems here, this is where it starts. You have authenticator.org, which obviously isn't the Google Authenticator, the correct Google Authenticator URL. So, the authenticator.org, that was the redirect domain. This one right here highlighted is the domain where they download the PowerShell script. So, we have the site that downloads the PowerShell script. And we know the IP of the C2 server because throwback to our tweet is the exact same IP, except this one is masquerading as Teams, this one is masquerading as Google Authenticator. So we search for that IP in Wireshark. And this is all the activity from the website's IP.
P. We control F, we search for API because that's one of the words in the string from the URL, from this IP search. And we see here, get API file, get PS1, HTTP 1.1. So that is the person requesting the file and then ultimately downloading the file. So follow HTTP stream and it won't let me zoom in, but you can see the HTTP stream um, of this get request. As you can see, host with malicious IP. And then the red is the victim and the blue is the attacker. You have the get request, AKA victim requesting the file and then the 200 okay response, which is the attacker. So we are back to the main packet capture. As you can see here, registration in B, Blue Moon Tuesday, which Blue Moon Tuesday is a domain. And this is a NetBIOS name registration request. So this could be the malware trying to spoof domain services or inserting itself into the domain environment or lateral movement or persistence or what have you. And you can see the same thing here on the actual victim desktop. And you'll see the name query as well. So that is either for persistence or moving laterally through the environment. Yay. So that was just a little breakdown of a malvertising campaign, AKA malicious advertisement. So it began with a fake website mimicking Google Authenticator. The person downloads the file, the file, oh, PowerShell script, and thus establishes a backdoor, thus allowing a C2. And it also attempted to register or spoof, spoof domain level services for lateral movement or persistence. Whatever one, both bad. So hope you guys got something out of that. Very interesting to analyze attacks in Wireshark. Um, can I kind of see breadcrumbs bit by bit, packet by packet, literally, um, make sure to punch all the buttons in the face, like subscribe, notification bell, whatever. And we'll see you in the next video.